you know, you'd been on all of these, you know, medication, particularly the steroids and, you know, the injections as a kid, the steroids through inhalers and whatnot. Did that have any impact on your bone health? Because typically we know that that can lead to significant osteoporotic stuff. Have, that, have you been assessed for that? And I don't know if, if carnivore has helped that in any way. Absolutely. And yes, I was osteoporotic early and because I'm also small. Mm -hmm. I went through menopause at 45 years old and I'm very small and I had all the steroids. So yes, I was osteoporotic at, I think I was osteopenia at 39 and osteoporotic by the time I was mid forties. And um, was told I had to take medications. And I said, no. I had a doctor that insisted I hadn't been retested because every time I got tested, I'd cry. And it was really depressing. And I knew I would never take the medications. So um, I stopped getting tested. And I had another doctor I got. It was a mistake of a doctor. He was a pill pusher and insisted I had had with a capital H-A-D to take this horrible medication, which I looked up and everybody who the reviews on it were, it ruined my life. You have to stay on. Anyway, it was awful. So I came back to him and I said, I'm absolutely not going to take this. And I said, you might as well test me and just see where it is. He said, no, you don't need a test. You need the, the pills. I said, no, I'll get the test. Well, nine years after, and I had started lifting heavier, I went to CrossFit because as a personal trainer, I was always a functional trainer. And did a lot of um, high rep, a lot of volume, high rep, low, lower weights, never lifted that heavy, but was still always a runner. But I decided um, with the CrossFit, I was going to focus on lifting heavier and jumping. Well, you know, when I was out running, I'd jump up on boulders or logs and jump off and do a lot more impact, high impact and jumping and lifting. And so by the time I got retested, this guy finally agreed to give me the test. I got tested and I had not progressed. This was pre-carnivore, um, but I had not pre progressed in nine years. I was exactly where I was just from the heavier lifting and the run, the jumping. And so I was pleased with that. And um, I am very tempted to get retested now. I haven't yet. It's on my list to do. I'm wondering, you know, I'm thinking maybe of waiting another year on carnivore, give it like a full three years, three and a half years on carnivore to retest. Because I, from what I understand, Sean, am I right that it takes a long time to show any change in the bones? Well, yeah, it's not going to be a fast process. Yeah, it's, it's something yeah, over a couple of years for sure. Yeah, so I will retest and I would not be surprised at all if I've reversed it on carnivore, because I think you have to with that much protein and eating connective tissue and um, um, just being healthier all the way around. I, I would not be surprised at all. Yeah, I wouldn't either. And I've seen it on a number of number of people now, a number of particular women have seen significant reversal of osteoporosis or osteopenia on this. So I wouldn't be surprised. It'll be interesting to see how that happens. You mentioned protein. So what, you know, because the inevitable question always is, what do you eat on a carnivore diet? Are you eating I mean, I don't know. You just tell me what you're eating. How's that? I started out needing the variety pack. Um, I needed to have several kinds of meat on my plate to, to transition. You know, I'd have some beef, some chicken, you know, maybe a little pate or something. And uh, that was great for transitioning. And then as as time went on, I found I did not feel as well on chicken, pork, Fish to me is just a side dish. It'll never fill me up. It'll never satisfy me. If I have it, it has to be along with beef. But now I am pretty much ruminant meat only mm -hmm. because I feel the best on that. And I can eat just beef. Um, my favorite is, <laughs> believe it or not, chuck. Mm -hmm. I, I just buy the chuck. Yeah. I cut it down into steaks. I grill it on a really hot grill. Uh, medium rare inside. And that's my absolute go-to favorite. But I, I also buy whole ribeyes and cut them up into steaks. Um, so I love ribeyes. We get, we buy a half a cow every year from a neighbor. We get two lambs and a half a cow from our neighbors. And we go through every morsel, every bit of the half cow and two lambs Plus, I supplement at the at Rayleigh's or um, mm -hmm. Costco 
with the ribeyes and the chuck. Yeah. So I eat about, I could eat as much as you put in front of me, but I still do need to watch calories do matter for me. Mm-hmm. I can gain weight pretty easily. I'm an easy keeper. So for me to stay about a pound, I only weigh in you know, around 105 pounds, sometimes less, sometimes a little more, but around that, I think a pound of meat is really good. It's like 120 grams of protein, 100 grams of fat on average. And that works well for me. I am a chow hound. I could eat two pounds if you put it in front of me, but I don't think I need it. And I do just fine with one pound. Now, is that one meal a day, two meals a day? How do you break that up typically? Two. I I get hungry. It's it's kind of funny. I get hungry in the morning and I try to get to my workout to do. I enjoy fasted workouts. I feel very, very good. It's like a buzz. It feels really good to do a fasted workout. And so I tried, I get hungry before my workout, but I really try to push that away and get my workout in first. And then I'll eat somewhere around, on average, between 10 and noon. I'll have a small meal, like maybe four or five ounces. And I try to load up on fat in the morning. That feels good. And then I like to eat before, like between three to four o'clock is when I'll eat the rest of my meal, maybe uh, 12 ounces or so of meat at one time then. So two meals a day. And then I I think I told you the other day, I don't feel full. If I sat down to a normal dinner when my husband does, I could eat a pound and then look around. We're all settled for the night. Look around for something else to eat, snack on. That's the enemy of the weight issue. So if I eat at three or four, then I'm absolutely not hungry. By the time my husband sits down and we eat, we're we're sitting together and done for the day. I'm not hungry at all. That's when my satiation, my satiety receptors go off um, about dinner time, and that's perfect. And I've discovered that that really works for me. Plus, I sleep better if I don't eat later. Uh, it affects you know sleep, as most people know. If you go to sleep on a big old bunch of meat, that's going to be tough. <laughs> 